For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Welcome. We are having a uh, devotion this week. Uh, we are nearing the end of Advent and, of course, uh, barreling towards Christmas. Um, but I think it's worth this week especially to take a little time out to, uh, to praise God and take a little time for reflection. Um, Christmas Eve service will be here at 5.30 on Friday. Uh, I will also be posting something online, so uh, don't worry if you cannot make it. We'll post it online and uh, try to get a live stream if I can get it all working. Um, but for today, like I said, we'll just take some time out, reflect on Advent, reflect on First Thessalonians, and um, maybe prepare the way for Christmas uh, this year. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, and all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our risen Lord, we pray. Amen. So we have been going through 1 Thessalonians, and we will read the back half of chapter 4 today. If, if you'll recall, if you've been following along, um, 1 Thessalonians is a very joyful book. Paul does a lot of commending, a lot of wishing to see uh, the Thessalonians. If there is a crux, a problem, a question he is trying to answer other than just commending them, it's this section. This is chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So maybe you've got the problem. It seems uh, that the Thessalonians were worried because some of the people in their church had died. Now, of course, we can understand that being uh, responding in sadness, in grief to someone dying. But why would they be worried? And I, I think the simple answer is that at the, this time, uh, when Paul is writing this letter, the expectation was Christ will come back very soon. This will all be finished up, wrapped up pretty quickly, and we'll all get to live in glory with the Lord. I still believe that Christ will come very soon, but we've got to uh, deal with the fact that, that very soon for God is not the same as very soon for us. We still have to be prepared. Be ready for the day of the Lord. But we, we know now that it might take a few generations. For the Thessalonians, they didn't. They were expecting all to be raised up pretty soon, any day now. But Paul's message uh, is all about hope. He says, for those of you who have hope. And, and so, to be honest with you, I thought of 1 Thessalonians as I was looking to, forward to Advent. Because it is a season of hope. We, we carry so many troubles with us throughout our lives, throughout the year. And, and if the church can be anything, it should be a place of hope that, that God ultimately is working for good in the world. And so in Advent, we expect Christmas. We await uh, the, the holiday we celebrate. But more than that, we also await 
Christ's return. I, I, I have probably mentioned that during Advent. I hope you have heard that theme run through Advent. Advent is decidedly apocalyptic, right? It, it looks forward not just to the birth of Christ, but to his return to the earth. Which, which could come any day now. Just because it has not happened for 2,000 years does not mean it will not happen today or tomorrow or the next. But Paul's message to the Thessalonians is one of hope. As much as they grieve for those people who have gone before, God is not bound by death, right? If, if the resurrection of Christ which is the center of our lives in him, uh, if we are to believe it, it means that God is not bound by death, that someone could have died. And we will see them again, just as the disciples saw Jesus again. And so just as God is not bound by death, God is not bound by time. A lot of time has passed since the days when this was written. But on that last day, maybe I'll see some of those Thessalonians and say, see, it was okay. In this Advent season, we do anticipate the end times. But it's not the end times of movies, not the end times of, of some imagined worlds, of the world falling apart, of destruction and death and devastation. The end times, to me, look like Advent in our church like beauty, like restoration, like greenery. The way Paul recounts this, the dead in Christ will rise and we'll get caught up with them and we'll give glory to God. That's the end we look forward to. And so I really believe that Christmas in our world is, is a hope, an anticipation of what I see as Christ's return. Not, not, not a cataclysmic event, but an event of renewal, of restoration, of comfort and hope. It will be apocalyptic, make no mistake. The, the, the systems and powers and, and rule of sin and death and Satan that is so apparent in our world will come to an end, and that will feel like the end for many. But for us, it is the beginning of Christ's rule of our life in him. That is a beautiful thing, a glorious, blessed thing. You don't get very far in this life without asking questions of God. Why did this happen? Why did this person leave the earth before I hoped they would? Why are things still this way? But I believe that Christ was raised from the dead. And with that belief, I believe that God is not bound by death or bound by time. That Christ is still coming. And I look forward to the day when he returns. And until then, we've got hope. We've got one another, and we've got the church by which we, we help each other believe in that resurrection and believe in that last day. And so I can't tell you to put away your troubles this Christmas. I can't tell you to ignore them or that everything will be okay tomorrow. But someday they will be. God isn't bound by death or by time. Thanks be to God for that. So I want to sing a Christmas song. But for me, uh, the best Christmas songs, they also look forward to the next life, to, to the, the, the birth of Christ in our hearts and the birth of Christ to make the whole world new. And so um, this is, it came upon a midnight clear, but this, this fourth verse, I'm going to read for you so you can hear it again uh, with my bad singing. For lo, the days are hastening on by prophet seen of old, when with the ever-circling years shall come the time foretold, when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling, 
and the whole world send back the song which now the angels sing. Isn't that a beautiful message? That, that the song of the angels on Christmas, glory to God in the highest heaven, someday we will all sing it together. That's the hope of Advent. Praise God. So this Christmas, hopefully I'll see you before then, but if I don't, send back the song which the angels sing. Proclaim Christ to this world this Christmas. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>